Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India try to explain in this lecture is uh, how uh, the uh, notion of homotopies uh, and the notion of lifting of paths comes into the picture uh, when we look at covering spaces ok. So, uh, let me recall that there were uh, two examples of uh, covering spaces of Riemann surfaces that I gave you one was uh, um, so let me write that here one was uh, uh, we had uh, omega a complex number non zero and then uh, we had the covering map c2 c modulo the group which is uh, tr the translation by integer multiples of omega okay and uh, i told you that uh, I, I, if we call this map as pi sub omega I told you that this is a covering map uh, and this quotient is topologically a cylinder and uh, it acquires a Riemann surface structure such that this map becomes holomorphic and then I told you that uh, uh, if you take a point the cylinder and take the inverse image then the inverse image turns out to be set theoretically the same as this group of integer translations by integer multiples of omega which also is isomorphic to z which turns out to be the fundamental group of the cylinder ok. So, uh, what I wanted to say was that when you take this covering space situation uh, the fiber over a point that is the inverse image of a point is set theoretically the same as the fundamental group of the base space ok and uh, similarly um, so uh, pi omega inverse let me write that down pi omega inverse the inverse image of a point x is isomorphic uh, to uh, z uh, and uh, uh, which is also isomorphic to the fun first fundamental group of uh, uh, if I call this as script C sub omega this is uh, the cylinder with uh, Riemann surface structure given in this way ok. So, this is pi 1 of C sub omega ok. So, um, of course this uh, this isomorphism is an isomorphism as uh, uh, a bijection as sets and in fact uh, this is uh, an isomorphism of groups ok because uh, the first fundamental group is z and uh, this also turns out to be so so let me write that down this is this is bijection of sets and this is uh, isomorphism of groups And in fact, what I want to say is that this this is of course isomorphic also to uh, uh, this this z dot t sub omega. So this was the group. Um, what uh, this was the group of automorphisms of C, a subgroup of automorphisms of C, which you had to go modulo to get the Riemann surface structure on the cylinder. Okay. So you see, the fundamental group of the cylinder uh, is occurring in three ways or you can see it occur in the covering space this is the universal covering space because you see the top space is uh, simply connected ok. Uh, so, this you see the fundamental group appearing in three ways one thing is it is bijective to the fundamental group of the base is bijective to every fiber ok that is this statement ok. The fundamental group of the base is also 
isomorphic to uh, a subgroup of automorphisms of the covering space of the universal covering space and that subgroup is precisely the subgroup model of which you have to go to get the base below the base space below you see. So you see this is how the fundamental so this involves this tells you two things first thing is the fiber being identified with the fundamental group is one point the other point is the fundamental group below being realized as a subgroup of holomorphic automorphisms of the space above okay these are two aspects of covering space theory which are very very important that uh, that you would like to understand okay. So I will try to explain in this lecture uh, how this happens okay um, so, so let me also recall the other example the, the other example is that of uh, the holomorphic structure on a cylinder uh, on, a, on a torus okay. Uh, so what did we do we took um, we took two complex numbers omega 1 omega 2 non zero complex numbers and of course we assume that they are linearly independent over r okay. So that means uh, omega 1 by omega 2 is not a real number okay that means these two the vectors represented by these two complex numbers uh, are two linearly independent vectors they form a parallelogram of non zero area okay and then I told you that uh, you get a holomorphic uh, structure uh, on the on the torus in the following way namely you simply go modulo the uh, group of translations by integral multiples integer multiples of these two. So it was z dot translation by omega 1 uh, cross z translations by omega 2 okay and in this case also the same thing happened what namely you take a point x uh, here okay take a point x here the the inverse image pi omega 1 comma omega 2 inverse of a point x seem gave you a grid of points in the complex plane and the grid was just isomorphic to you know z cross z which also turns out to be the fundamental group of this of this complex torus okay mind you this is a Riemann surface structure on the real torus S which is homeomorphic to S1 cross S1 okay. Uh, so I think I call this uh, one can call this T sub omega 1 comma omega 2 okay. So uh, the fundamental group of the torus the fundamental group of the torus is also Z cross Z okay so this is an isomorphism uh, so again here we have a similar situation namely this is isomorphic to the first fundamental group of the torus of course um, I can it whenever I say first fundamental group it is just fundamental first fundamental group as a topological space I can forget the Riemann surface structure mind you because the first fundamental group is defined only on the underlying topological space okay and uh, uh, well again in as in this case uh, you see that uh, this is a this is a bijection of sets of sets and uh, well this is uh, this this is an isomorphism of groups and in fact uh, uh, this is isomorphic to uh, z dot uh, this 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 subgroup okay so again it is the same picture this is again a holomorphic uh, universal uh, covering okay uh, for every point here the inverse image is isomorphic to the fundamental group below as a set okay and the fundamental group of the base can be uh, realized as exactly a certain subgroup namely this one subgroup of automorphisms holomorphic automorphisms of C of the coverings universal covering space model which you have to go to get this uh, uh, holomorphic structure on the torus okay. So these are two uh, nice examples and they tell you what happens in general so uh, so we one has to one, one would like to understand uh, the following questions first of all why is it that the fundamental group of the base shows up uh, set theoretically as the fiber over each point that is the first question to answer or to understand. The second question is how is it that the fundamental group of the base uh, 
uh, how is it that it can be realized as a subgroup of automorphisms of the covering space okay. So, the key to this understanding is uh, what is called the covering homotopy theorem okay which is a fundamental tool in, in, in the study of covering spaces and which is what I am trying I am going to try to explain okay. So, uh, so to begin with uh, 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 so let me make some definitions so the first definition is uh, the following um, okay so let me make a few blanket assumptions um, uh, uh, in the course of our discussion we will need uh, several hypotheses uh, and so I am going to make some blanket hypothesis about the kind of spaces that we are going to work with we may not be using all the hypothesis or maybe we may use some weaker hypothesis in certain cases but just to make the exposition uh, simple I will make some blanket assumptions uh, um, assume uh, all topological spaces are um, well I think uh, I should erase this assume all topological spaces are um, uh, by by that I mean all topological spaces that we are going to talk about okay uh, uh, number one housed off uh, which is essentially that uh, any two distinct points can be separated by disjoint open neighborhoods uh, then number two uh, arc wise or path wise connected uh, number three uh, so of course if you recall arc wise or path wise connected means that any two points uh, any two distinct points uh, can be connect connected by a continuous image of an interval okay a closed interval and uh, uh, then locally uh, arc wise or path wise connected a weaker condition than 2 is just assuming connectedness which is weaker. So, if you assume arc wise or path wise connected it implies that it is connected okay. So, a weaker condition for 2 would be connected and uh, whenever we can assume that I will I will make a mention of it. Then uh, the fourth one is uh, locally simply connected locally simply connected okay. So, this is the condition that every point has uh, an open neighborhood. Uh, which has the property that it is simply connected namely that any uh, closed path in that uh, neighborhood can be continuously shrunk to a point okay. So, a closed path means a continuous image of an interval which starts at one point and ends back at the same point okay uh, one sometimes refers to this as a loop based at a point okay and uh, the condition of for simply connectedness is that this loop can be continuously shrunk to 0 and that can happen only if there are no holes uh, in, in, in that neighborhood. So, we put all these conditions okay uh, um, in what follows okay. Um, so, uh, I will make the first definition the first definition I want to tell you about is that of a uh, local homeomorphism okay. So, uh, a continuous map um, f from um, let me say uh, y to um, or let me just put x to y is uh, uh, called a local homeomorphism local homeomorphism if for every point x in x there exists an open set v uh, let me call it as u. There exists an open set U in X, X belonging to U such that F restricted to U from U to F of U is a homeomorphism onto an open subset F of U of y okay. So, the definition of a local homeomorphism 
is a continuous map uh, such that at every point I am able to find an, a neighborhood which this map maps homeomorphically onto an open neighborhood in the target topological space okay. So, uh, uh, so the, the uh, what is the connection the uh, you know that uh, every covering map uh, in fact uh, uh, you these covering maps if you remember I explained that they are all open okay uh, because you take any set here okay then its inverse image is just translates of a fixed uh, copy of this set above okay and all these translates are disjoint if you if you choose a set below uh, small enough they will all be disjoint if, if you choose the set if you do not choose them small enough they will still be a union of uh, open sets okay and uh, the quotient topology will tell you that uh, you know a set here is open if and only if the inverse image is open okay. So, uh, if I start with an open set here I take its image there okay then you can check that this is an open uh, then this is an open set here okay and how why is it an open set that is beca precisely because of of the quotient topology because its inverse image will be all translates of the original open set I started with here by this group and all these translates are all open okay. So, that is the reason why the image of an open set is open the same thing happens here. So, let me repeat that why are these open maps because I start with an open set here I take its image there I want to say that that is open but by the quotient topology this is open if and only if the inverse image of that is open but what is the inverse image the inverse image is just translates of the original open set I started with translates by these maps okay a, a the union of all such translates and each such translate is, a, is an open set and therefore the inverse image is the union of all such open sets which are translates and therefore it is open and therefore this is an open map and this happens in general for uh, 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 a covering space. So, what I wanted to say is that uh, uh, and of course you know a covering space has this property the property of being a local homeomorphism okay because a covering space definition is you give me a point every point below has a neighborhood such that the inverse image is a disjoint union of neighborhoods each of which is homeomorphic to the point to the to the neighborhood below the admissible neighborhood below. So, uh, if you look at it that it, it will tell you that every covering space is in fact a surjective local homeomorphism okay. So, uh, uh, so example uh, every every covering space um, I should say every covering map is uh, surjective local homeomorphism okay. So, this is an example and uh, um, but of course, the covering map is more just it is it's not just a surjective local homeomorphism homeomorphism, but it is more than that. But uh, why did I single this out because uh, of the following fact namely you take a surjective local homeomorphism okay then it will be an open map okay. So, uh, uh, so lemma a surjective uh, local homeomorphism is an open map okay. So, uh, this is very very easy to prove you can you can convince yourself of, of this and uh, as a result uh, what it tells you is that uh, every covering map is also an open map and by of course by open mapping you need a you mean a map uh, which maps open sets to open sets and that is what is happening in these cases okay. So, what is happening in these cases is also true generally a uh, uh, covering map is always an open mapping it takes open sets to open sets okay and uh, the reason is because it is a surjective local homeomorphism okay. So, um, in particular any covering map 
it is open okay. So this is a very simple exercise in topology you can take you can check it. Um, now having said this the um, the next thing that I would like to worry about is um, uh, uh, I would like to talk about uh, uh, the, the, the converse condition okay. So suppose I know that uh, I have a surjective local homeomorphism okay uh, which is of course true for a covering map okay. Uh, what more conditions do I have to put to a surjective local homeomorphism so that it becomes a covering map. Okay. So the surjective local homeomorphism is a weaker condition than a covering map okay. So my question is uh, can you put some more conditions to this so that you can get back the covering property okay the property of a covering map. So this is where uh, this is where uh, uh, the lifting property the unique lifting the, the lifting property uh, of uh, the lifting property of maps comes into the picture okay. So I will explain what that is. So um, Maybe I can use. I will draw this line here um, and remove this. So, so let me talk about. Uh, let next let me talk about liftings of maps. So the situation is uh, the following. Um, you see, I have uh, I have a map. Uh, I have a map f from x to y, which I'm purposely writing in the writing it writing it, writing it vertically okay and um, suppose uh, I have a map from uh, z to y let me call this as h okay. So uh, given um, so let me say that given uh, continuous maps continuous maps uh, h f from x to y h from z to y okay. So these are continuous maps uh, a lifting of h a lifting of h to x to x is a map h tilde from z to x uh, such that uh, h tilde followed by f is h. So this is this is a lifting of a map so there is a h tilde uh, of course when I say map I mean of course continuous map okay we are in the category of topological spaces so um, so uh, so if you want I should include here continuous I just put CTS okay. So uh, so what has happened is that this map h has been lift lifted to a map h tilde and why why do we call this a lift because this followed by this is this that is this condition okay. So we say that h tilde is a lift of the map h okay h tilde is a lift of the map h. Now there is a very nice uh, uh, there is a very nice uh, uh, lemma uh, the lemma says that you know if you have a uh, surjective local homeomorphism suppose this map f is a surjective local homeomorphism and uh, uh, suppose this, this this set z is uh, say connected okay uh, and locally connected okay which is uh, slightly weaker than uh, you know arc wise connected and locally arc wise connected okay. Um, so uh, in that case uh, there is something very nice that is going to happen. Uh, it says that if you have two liftings suppose you have two liftings and suppose both liftings uh, coincide at one point of z then they coincide everywhere okay. So uh, the moral of the story is uh, if you have a lifting okay with a prescribed value at a point of z okay then that is unique namely if there are two liftings which have the same value at one point of z then they have to be everywhere equal okay. So this property is called the uniqueness of lifting property okay and this uniqueness of lifting property happens whenever f is a surjective local homeomorphism okay. So uh, so let me state that uh, 
um, we say f has the uniqueness of lifting property if whenever there are two liftings two liftings let me call them h1 tilde h2 tilde of h okay such that of h such that h1 tilde uh, of z of z not is equal to h2 tilde of z not okay then h1 tilde is equal to h2 tilde so what i'm uh, defining is this uniqueness of lifting property so what is this uniqueness of lifting properties property it says that if you have two liftings h1 tilde h2 tilde namely two maps like this which when composed by f give h okay and of course again when i say uh, maps i always mean continuous maps okay and suppose these two uh, are going to coincide at one point of z okay then they're going to coincide everywhere right so um, the nice thing is that um, a surjective local homeomorphism is going to have uh, is going to have this uniqueness of list lifting property okay right so let me write that down uh, i'll just check the uh, uh, let me just check uh, the uh, mm, the hypothesis um, maybe if one spends a little bit more time some of the hypothesis may can be weakened but anyway uh, let's not worry too much about that so let me state so let me state this lemma uh, uh, here uh, surjective local homeomorphism has the uniqueness of lifting property okay a surjective local homeomorphism has the uniqueness of lifting property okay so in other words uh, if f from x to y is a surjective local homeomorphism okay then it has the uniqueness of lifting property namely you give me any map from any other topological space to y of course when i say any other topological space i am assuming at least that for example it is connected and uh, i am assuming all these things so the i may i may not need all of them to get the conclusion but for safety i am assuming all of these conditions so uh, in particular i am assuming that is connected and locally connected okay so um, then any map if you give me a map from z to y which has two liftings and if these liftings are same at one point of z then they have to be same everywhere okay so this is in particular true of uh, this is in particular true of uh, covering spaces because covering spaces are of course covering maps are of course surjective local homeomorphisms okay so uh, uh, this is in particular true of uh, covering maps i'll tell you why this is uh, uh, why this is important it's important for the following reason uh, is uh, so you see suppose uh, from x tilde to x suppose i had a covering space okay and suppose uh, uh, i take uh, i to be the uh, unit interval and i take a map uh, from i to x you know the image of i is going to be uh, a path in x all right so um, well um, so i so if i draw if i draw a diagram then this is my x and i am going to get a path okay this path is going to start at alpha of 0 and it's going to end at alpha of 1 right now suppose uh, i am able to find uh, so you see so this point is alpha of 0 and this point is alpha of 1 okay and there is this uh, there is this covering space above and uh, uh, let me draw it 
with a little bit more space so that I can uh, draw it like this. So here is my covering space above. Okay. Suppose for this point here, suppose I choose a pre-image above. After all, the covering map is surjective, okay, and you know, uh, given any point here, I, I can choose a pre-image, okay. Um, then, uh, if I if I'm able to find a lift alpha tilde of this uh, path alpha, it's going to be a uh, so this is my path alpha, and I'm going to get another path here above alpha tilde. The only thing is that this point is alpha tilde of uh, zero that point is going to be you know alpha tilde of 1 and you know under the projection p alpha tilde of 0 will go to alpha of 0 and alpha tilde of 1 is going to go to alpha of 1 okay and uh, suppose i have a lifting like this and uh, then uh, this lemma will tell me that the uh, lifting is going to be unique okay in the sense that if i had another uh, if I had another lift, uh, if I had another lift starting at alpha of zero, okay, then I will get uh, uh, starting at alpha tilde of zero, okay. Then that's going to give me another lift here, and both the lifts coincide at the point zero, okay. Uh, alpha tilde of zero, uh, they both coincide here. They 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 coincide at the point zero here. Okay, both maps. So what I'm trying to say is that if I if I really draw it, you can imagine such a situation, namely that you know I have alpha alpha one tilde, I have also alpha two tilde, I have two lifts of this map, okay, which of course means that alpha one tilde followed by p is alpha, and the same is true of alpha two tilde, also, okay, two lifts, and suppose that alpha one tilde. Uh, and alpha 2 tilde have the same uh, starting point. So this is alpha 2 tilde of 0, uh, this is the same as, uh, uh, so let me write that here um, and this is alpha 2 tilde of 1, okay. So this, so this map is alpha 2 tilde, the, the, this path is alpha 2 tilde. So you see the path below is alpha and it has been lifted let us say to 2 paths. Wow alpha 1 tilde and alpha 2 tilde. So uh, I, but I assume that you know this starting point is the same, the initial point for both paths is the same. Uh, of course you know alpha 1 tilde and alpha 2 tilde at 1 they should lie above alpha of 1 because of this condition. These paths lie over this path, so if I follow this path by the projection I should get the path below, okay. So it is clear that alpha 1 tilde of 1 and alpha 2 tilde of 1 the end points are certainly points lying above the end point below okay but that is not the point the point is that this uh, the both the maps alpha 1 and alpha 2 they agree at the point 0 that is what it means to say that they start from the same point alpha 1 tilde uh, of 0 is equal to alpha 2 tilde of 0 and what does the what does the uniqueness of lifting property now say uh, it says that these two paths have to be the same. So the moral of the story is if you uh, if you have a covering space okay like situation you take a path below okay and for this path you take the initial point and choose a point above okay then there is a unique if at all there are paths above that lift to this path there can be only one okay. So you see uh, a path below is going to give you a unique path above if you fix the initial point above. So you see now uh, you can guess uh, that in some way the fundamental group is going to be involved because after all the fundamental group is connected with closed paths okay and taking homotopy classes. So uh, this is how uh, uh, it enters into the picture. So, um, so then uh, you know alpha 1 tilde is equal to alpha 2 tilde. So given a path below if at all you can lift it you can lift it only to one path provided you fix the initial point above at this point matters you could have fixed some other initial point and then you would get some other path okay but once you fix the initial point above lying above the initial point below then there is only one path you can get okay. So uh, um, so we say that 
you know this uniqueness of uh, path lifting property is uh, true for uh, covering spaces okay. Now there is another question look at this uh, uh, definition on the uniqueness of lifting uh, property okay mind you the uniqueness of lifting property is for any maps uh, not just paths I, sp I specialize to the case of a path okay but it is true it is supposed to be defined for any maps all right. You see we still do not know uh, whether given a map you can actually lift it okay. For example what this condition says is if you get two lifts which agree at one point then they are the same but it did not it does not guarantee you the existence of a lifting okay it does not guarantee you the existence of a lifting. So uh, where do you get that from so uh, it happens for covering spaces okay. So in the case of covering spaces you have the existence of a lifting okay and then because it is also a local homeomorphism the lifting is unique okay. So we say that the covering spaces uh, have the covering maps they have the unique path lifting property okay. So uh, um, so so to explain that let me um, uh, draw a diagram um, just to uh, so let me say the following uh, covering spaces spaces uh, do have the unique path lifting so what is this unique path lifting property it unique path lifting property is given a path below you can get a unique path above provided the initial point of the un the initial point above has been fixed okay. So it gives you existence of a lifting and of course uniqueness of a lifting follows from this lemma okay. So um, if I if I draw a diagram so I, I have I have a, I have a diagram like this so I have I have a covering map so uh, of course um, I should I should actually write covering maps uh, let me do that of course um, uh, of course you know uh, uh, when I say it is a property of a map of course the source and the target spaces are also involved. So uh, if I say covering space of course it also involves a covering map and if I say covering map also it involves the source and target spaces. So uh, sometimes by abuse of language one interchanges this uh, but anyway so the point is you see you take covering maps they are they are surjective local homeomorphisms which are of course open maps okay and surjective local homeomorphisms have this uniqueness of path lifting property uniqueness of lifting property of course uniqueness of lifting provided uh, you know the lifting at one point is prescribed okay. I am not just saying that just take any two liftings they are the same that is not correct two liftings which agree at at least one point is what I want okay. So here also I am not just saying you take a path below there is a unique path above no a point a path below will give you a unique path above provided you fix a starting point which has to be a point you fix lying above this point below. So uh, you have uniqueness of lifting property and then you have the uh, path lifting property see a map can have any map can have a path lifting property which you can define in a very simple way a path below can be lifted to a path above okay. So I can define it for any map okay any map can be said to have a path lifting property if given a path below you can lift it to a path above okay. So well uh, you uh, so what I was trying to say is if you take a covering map you are going to get a uniqueness of lifting property okay because of this series of implications and then I am I have also told you I am also telling you here that there is a unique path lifting property which means that uh, you also have the existence of lifting paths 
okay and these two put together these two put together uh, let me put it like this these two put together give you uh, the unique path lifting property. So this is the property that ensures that you know uh, given paths given a path below you can always lift it to a path above and that path is unique alright. Of course whenever I say unique path above the starting point has to be fixed okay and uh, the covering maps uh, they have this path lifting property. How this comes about is uh, by what is called as uh, the covering homotopy theorem. So uh, this is the uh, so I will write it here covering homotopy here it is the basic tool to uh, uh, link these ideas okay and the beautiful thing is uh, I you know I started with this question uh, you see a covering map is a surjective local homeomorphism which has a uniqueness of uh, uh, lifting property okay and I asked you what more should you add to a surjective local homeomorphism to make it a covering space the answer is as follows you take a surjective lo local homeomorphism which has the path lifting property okay of course if it has a path lifting property it has to be a unique path lifting property because the surjective local homeomorphism is going to imply uniqueness of lifting. So you add this property of path lifting to surjective local homeomorphism and what you get is a covering map so it is it is a very beautiful result. So, uh, so I so I will just uh, signify that by you know putting a map like this putting a an arrow like this okay a surjective local homeomorphism which has the path lifting property okay has to be a covering map. So uh, uh, this will tell you in a, in a, in a, in a certain way how uh, uh, how covering maps behave okay. So uh, you can think of a covering map also as a surjective local homeomorphism with the path lifting property of course uniqueness of the path lifting uniqueness will come because it is already a, a local surjective local homeomorphism okay. So um, well now what remains is uh, somehow to explain the covering homotopy theorem okay. So let me do that so let me state the covering homotopy theorem and um, indicate to you uh, uh, how uh, the inverse image of a point under covering map uh, is bijective to the fundamental group of the base okay. So I need to explain that so I will do that next. So let me write this down covering homotopy theorem okay. Um, so my situation is the following um, so this is uh, uh, this is a as you can see uh, this is this is a um, theorem that describes the property of covering maps okay and uh, what it tells you is that <coughs> you can lift homotopies okay. So uh, let me write, write let me write on the statement let um, uh, P from x tilde to x be a covering space okay 
let it be a covering space. Let um, so uh, I'll first draw a diagram so that you know you can visualize what's happening. Um, <coughs> so I have I have x here, I have p, I have I have x tilde, okay, um, and um, roughly what I have is uh, so let me think think of the following situation. Let us assume that uh, you know there are uh, there is a path here which starts uh, say a path alpha and uh, suppose uh, there is another path beta okay and let us assume that alpha and beta are homotopic fixed end point homotopic. So uh, you know uh, so there is a family of paths like this okay. So this means that uh, you know uh, so I have a homotopy which is a map f from i cross i to x okay such that um, f of uh, so this uh, this i is treated as uh, the um, um, let let me treat this i as a time parameter okay which means that you know f of x comma t uh, is written as f sub t of x okay so and i want f0 of x to be alpha f1 of x to be beta okay and uh, whatever i get in in the intermediate paths they will be f sub t's all right and of course you know f all these paths start at the same point and they end at the same point and they all end at the same terminal point. So I will put that condition as f t of uh, uh, 0 uh, is let me say x0 and f t of 1 uh, the terminal point is always is, is say x1 okay. So I have a uh, I have two paths here alpha and beta on x which are homotopic okay. Now suppose I fix uh, a, a point above uh, x0 so I fix a point uh, let me call this as x0 tilde that is a point above okay and uh, suppose um, I have a path here which it lies over, over alpha okay so i have a path alpha tilde okay then uh, the conclusion of the theorem is that i can lift the whole homotopy to a homotopy of paths above okay so i'll write that down and uh, given so let me write this here given a homotopy of paths from alpha to beta on x which is given by this data and given a lifting of the path alpha alpha to alpha tilde okay. So let me rub the rest of this board. and given a lift um, uh, a lifting alpha tilde of alpha to uh, x tilde okay. So, so this is the picture this alpha tilde followed by p goes to alpha then then we can find a homotopy g i cross i to x tilde okay which is a lifting of f 
this is a lifting of f with uh, with g 0 uh, is equal to uh, alpha delta okay where of course uh, where of course g sub d of x is uh, g of x comma t. So, when you put t equal to 0 uh, you get g uh, 0 of x and g 0 of x lies above f 0 of x which is alpha and g 0 of x is uh, g 0 is just alpha tilde ok. So, this is uh, uh, so what I have written uh, is actually a special it is actually a special case of the covering homotopy theorem. So, this is not the uh, full covering homotopy theorem the full covering homotopy theorem is more uh, more general it is not just about lifting of paths ok it is it is not just about lifting of homotopies of paths it is about lifting of homotopies of maps and you will have to replace this i here by an z which is a compact connected space ok. So, let me write that down. So, I wrote this particular case because this is a, this is a special case of the covering homotopy theorem. So, let me write this more generally any homotopy uh, so let me write this as f from z cross i to x ok uh, with uh, z compact and of course, you know uh, one has to assume z is uh, uh, connected and locally connected um, yeah I think in this case uh, connected locally connected ok. So, any homotopy f ok uh, can be lifted to a homotopy g. So, g so f is going to be like this I will be able to lift it to a homotopy g this is a homotopy ok can be any homotopy can be lifted to a homotopy, but of course uh, you need to you need to prescribe the uh, the value uh, at a at a point. So, I should say um, uh, with with g 0 uh, uh, lying over f 0 ok. So, g 0 is uh, uh, g 0 is is just uh, g of x comma 0 and f 0 is f of x comma 0. So, you see uh, of course, when I say it can be lifted to homotopy g with g 0 lying over f 0 uh, I mean um, this is this is understood because g followed by p is f. So, g t will lie over f t ok for each t in i right. So, uh, but the point is of course, uh, as I told you uh, the uh, uh, this being a uh, covering map uh, this homotopy is a lift of f ok and um, in fact you can choose g in a very special way the theorem says that the g can be chosen in such a way that you know whenever f is stationary ok that is f uh, f does not depend on time for a particular value of z ok you can choose g also not to depend on time for a for that particular value of z. So, let me write that down in particular in fact we can choose g g to be stationary whenever f is 
what this what this means is the following so let me write that down here that is if z is a point of z with um, um, f of z comma t constant in a sub interval of i then g of z comma t is also constant for that uh, of course when i say if f z z small z belongs to cap, capital z with the f of z comma t constant in a sub interval of time uh, which means t should belong to that sub interval for all values of t for this value of z and for all values of t in that sub interval then the lift g will also have the same property namely g of z comma t will also be constant for that sub interval okay so f of z comma t uh, being stationary for a particular value of z means that for that particular value of z you vary time it doesn't change and the same property will be true of g also okay so uh, so this is the you can see that this is the general statement of the covering amount of a theorem uh, this is a special case this is a special case that you get when you put z equal to i okay this is a special case that you get uh, when you put z equal to i and now this has uh, uh, beautiful consequences right uh, which I will try to explain. Uh, 